Hey everybody, I'm Tristan and this is Heroes and Homebrew. This is the channel where I talk about role-playing games, uh, I build campaigns and adventures, and I do it all from scratch with you guys while you watch and maybe even give suggestions. Uh, for today, for my first video for this channel, I'm going to talk about why I'm leaving Dungeons & Dragons, or specifically why I'm leaving Dungeons & Dragons 5e. It isn't because I don't like the game. I do enjoy it. Uh, it's a great game. It's a great game for new people wanting to get into Dungeons & Dragons. But for me, there's something lacking. There's something that I ha I've kind of fallen out of love with. I loved it when I started. Uh, I started playing 5e back in, I want to say, 2015, 2016. Uh, I started playing it on World 20 because there was no one around that I uh, knew that would play tabletop RPGs with me or want to learn how to. So I started on World 20 and I had a blast. Over the years, though, it's become apparent to me that for me, for the stories that I want to tell, and I ended up falling into that forever DM position, that there's just, there's almost too much choice, and players beca began the game as basically superheroes, where almost nothing you they went through had any sort of consequence or any like gravitas the players could rest easy in the knowledge that they were most likely not going to die and after spending two hours making a player who wants their character to die really at first or second level and it's not that I don't run games that are sort of DM versus player like I, I want to play along with them I want to build a story together but it didn't seem like there was any challenge to it and also I decided I, there were other types of stories that I wanted to tell that let's face it 5e is just not meant to do 5e is meant to tell very high fantasy high magic stories and that's great over the years, though, I've been leaning more towards more low fantasy stories, kind of in like the pulp fantasy sort of Conan, the Conan the Barbarian style fantasy, and 5e is just not that game. And also, I wanted to play other types of games. I wanted to play cyberpunk. I wanted to try that genre out. Uh, Call of Cthulhu games like that and again yes you can create a horror adventure in 5e like um, Curse of Strad things like that <clears throat> but that's not what that game is designed to do and there's the, you can always go well you can sort of hack apart 5e and make it the system you want but why would I do all that work when the systems I want are out there? Or the system I want to play is very easy for me to put together with OSR rule systems that are out there. So that being said, that's what led me to discovering the OSR, the old school renaissance, old school revival style of play where there's multitudes of games and rule sets all based on original D&D or D&D 2nd edition that are either free or very cheap print on demand kind of price tag some of them are a little more expensive you have like games like Swordsman Sorcery of Hyperborea that yeah it's about $50 a book or something like that but by and large most of these game most of the OSR games are very affordable 
so I fell upon a game called Basic Fantasy Role Playing Game. It cost me seven dollars on Amazon for the for the the core rules. All of the books are priced at cost, so I think the most expensive one is pushing like maybe maybe eleven dollars Canadian, if that. I don't think it's even that expensive. Or all the PDFs are free. And it's uh, a community-driven game. The original rule set is written by Chris Gonerman, but it has a very active community behind it, constantly creating new supplements and new things for it. <clears throat> I'm just scroll through the PDF here, which is free. I downloaded it for free off of um, I can't remember if I got it through Drive Through or I got it off the their website. But it's very, very much a simplified D and D, just like D and D was when it first came out. You have four races: the dwarf, elf, halfling, human. You have four classes. Uh, the fighter, the cleric, magic user, and the thief, and that's basically it. So gone are is the hundreds and hundreds of multitudes of different races and different classes and backgrounds and feats and all of that to create a very simplified game. It takes like five minutes to create a, a character, and if it takes doesn't take that long to create a character, then you know what? Do you really care if he dies at first level? And the thing is, if you create those characters that die at first level, then the character you have that goes up to fifth or sixth level, those are the characters you're going to tell stories about. Like, oh, I had this cleric that made it all the way up to tenth level. So that was very appealing to me. And reading through the rules, I uh, discovered like a lot of the rules for basic fantasy. Some are, were newer to me because I hadn't played uh, second edition or first edition D&D. But some of them are very much like 5e. It's a good entry point if you're coming from 5e and you want to try out an OSR game that's more of a stripped down game. Then basic fantasy is a great way to go. <clears throat> Goes up to level 20 just like D&D. And of course you can play on after that. The other interesting thing I liked was that not all the classes level up at the same rate. If you look here, experience points for a cleric to get to second level is 1500, whereas for the fighter it's 2000. So you're still going to have you're going to have a bit of disparity between the classes as you play and that alone makes it more interesting. I'm not going to go through all all the rules because there's lots of videos that do it much much better than me. But that's where I started with it. I took looked at Basic Fantasy. I ordered the book off Amazon. I was reading through the PDF. And another one that I looked at that I really liked was uh, White Box. Which is another sort of... <clears throat> uh, it's a, an OSR game that is based on the white box from the original Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, it's an offshoot from the Swords and Sorcery. And white box also, the box is like $5, the, the book is like $5 on Amazon. You can see right here. It's a very small, digest size box, book, box. And that also is very much like basic fantasy but the rules are even more stripped down whereas basic fantasy the the rule book is a little dense white box is very much in the style of we're going to present you with some basic rules but it's going to be up to you guys to decide how you're going to play with them i thought i had the pdf open here but i don't but anyway <clears throat> so those two got me thinking and looking at the monsters 
they're very interchangeable. It doesn't take a, a lot to be able to pull a monster from Basic Fantasy and play it in White Box and vice versa. And so I kind of fell down this rabbit hole of looking at all these OSR games. And I fell upon the Black Hack. Which you can see it says here, the Black Hat is a traditional tabletop role-playing game played with paper, pencils, and dice. It uses the original 1970s fantasy role-playing game as a base, but it adds and takes away elements to make it a distinct streamlined flavor of the original role-playing game. So uh, they all say the original 1970s fantasy role-playing game or the greatest role-playing game on earth or the original role-playing game because they can't say Dungeons and Dragons. They all use the open gaming license to create these games based off the old rules but they can't just come out and say this is based on Dungeons and Dragons <clears throat> now the white box is 19 pages long the PDF is 19 pages I think the if you buy the PDF for the white box second edition or sorry not white box uh, black hack second edition I think it's about 130 pages it has a lot more classes and a lot more races in it stuff like that but the basic core uh, rules that can get you up and running playing any game is 19 pages which is amazing because you can just you can literally print this out for everybody at your table and get them playing again this uses armor points instead of an armor class which is an interesting mechanic <clears throat> Everything is very easily laid out. Very like the the rules are very concise, which is something I really like. You don't have to spend a lot of time flipping through the pages to be like, well, this rule contradicts this rule and this and that. The whole idea behind a lot of these games is that there's not a rule for everything, which is if you look at 5e, it's books and pages and pages of every little situation that you can come on there there's a rule for it which is great if you like really crunchy things and you like to have a rule for everything but if you just want speed and getting up and running and just want to have like that sort of like sitting around the table with your friends eating a bowl of popcorn and drinking two liters of soda till late at night and barely knowing the rules this is this is what really appealed to me. So I can remember when I started playing, uh, First, my first introduction to Dungeons & Dragons was AD&D 2nd Edition. Like, and I played for like an afternoon with my friends. None of us knew the rules. We were just making it up as we go along. So like, it, it wasn't even playing 2nd Edition. Then in my late teens, for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, we played... Um, Closer to the rules, AD and D Second Edition. Uh, I didn't have any of the books. I was just basically going with whatever my friend who was DMing at the time told us the rules were, and we were off and running. It wasn't until I got into Fifth Edition that I started buying books and looking at the rules and learning how to play the game, and then deciding that I wanted to go off and I wanted to play other games of other genres and do other things. <coughs> But now, for me, I think 5e is not, it's not scratching that itch anymore. I think the, when I discovered the OSR, that's, it kind of gave me that feeling of, yes, this is what, this is what my role-playing experience should be. This is how I want to play it. This is how I want to play it with my friends. And this is how I want to introduce it to some of my friends who have very little to no experience with D&D. I've played with some of my friends who've they've played 5e, but not a lot, maybe a couple of games, a couple of sessions here and there. So it's not like they're immersed in it, and it's not going to be hard to pull them, be like, hey, you know, like, let's let's try this. Which I think is another problem with uh, a lot of people who play 5e. And if they love the game, that's great, but I find a lot, there's there seems to be like this schism where there's groups of players who don't want to experiment or play anything else, which is fine. Five is your game. That's your game. That's your jam. Awesome. 
but it can't do every, everything. And I think acknowledging that 5e can't do everything and be every game, uh, I think that's a step towards finding these other games, many of which are written by independent game creators or even just people in their spare time being like, hey, I'm going to take this rule set, I'm going to hack it apart, and I'm going to create the, a different version. For instance, Black Hack is very good for that. It's uh, it's OGL just like all the other ones, but they are very generous in saying anything you want to create using our rule set, you want to hack it apart and create something new out of it, go for it. You can sell it on uh, Drive Through RPG, what have you. It's all yours. So that's when I discovered the Pulp Hack, which I've looked through. I haven't had a chance to play, but. It looks very fun to me. The the idea of those old pulp stories from the 1930s and 1920s, like the uh, the the Conan stories or the Shadow or you know things like that. Even Indiana Jones is based on those old pulp stories. You know, like. It's that kind of genre where you can... Anything weird you want to in include, go for it. For, like, for instance, here in the opening of the book, it says, A mad scientist has used old schematics from Nikola Tesla and a Peruvian demon stone to create an army of Rasputin clones. That's awesome. I don't know where that's going. But that's going to be a lot of fun to play. Where a group of robots from the far reaches of the galaxy have landed on Earth to study the brains of prominent composers. Things like that, where it's just, let's get crazy, let's get weird, and see where this goes. That's my jam. That looks like a lot of fun to me. <clears throat> and then, of course, you can go and find the games that are what are called retro clones, which are very much ingrained in the original Dungeons and Dragons. They're very much of the source material. Things like uh, Iron Falcon, which is written by Chris Gonnerman, who wrote the uh, Basic Fantasy, is very much a <clears throat> a clone of the original Dungeons and Dragons. It's a much thicker, heftier, crunchier book even with still being very simple to learn. And you have things like uh, Labyrinth Lord, pretty much the same. All of these PDFs I got for free off uh, drive through. Some of them aren't the complete, they're the, the free versions, which are a little more stripped down than the complete versions. But again, if you're, trying, if you're just trying them out, then why not? Uh, Lamentations of the Flame Princess is something I haven't gotten a lot of time to look through it. Uh, it's a weird fantasy role playing game, which is kind of like in line with the Conan the Barbarian call kind of thing. It looks like it'll be a lot of fun. Ooh, what's going on here? All right, moving on. Um, and Swords and Wizardry, which is what the White Box was spun off from. <clears throat> This is a more uh, denser version of that game. It's more of like, whereas what if White Box were to be the first edition, Swords and Wizardry is would be Advanced Dungeons and Dragons second edition, which is weird because Swords of Wizardry came out first. And besides these, you have other things like um, Dungeon Crawl Classics, which I have not picked up yet. I want to. I want to get it because it looks like it's a lot of fun it's a very uh, sort of weird fantasy too apparently it's got a lot of tables and you can create this crazy game out of it so you have all these games then you have Osric which is old school reference and index compilation which again is this was the sort of like the original the start of the OSR when it came out it was one of the first games of this kind that took all of those rules from the original Dungeons and Dragons from 1974 and sort of 
rewrote them, made them a little more easier to understand, and sort of brought them back into the limelight. So all of this to say, this is why I'm moving away from 5e. I'm not saying I won't ever go back. I probably absolutely will go back and play it again when I have that itch where I want super high fantasy where my characters can do anything and the world is full of magic. But for now, for where I am and what I want, what I want out of my storytelling and my tables, this is where I'm going. Besides the fact that it's a different style of play. Whereas modern role playing kind of lends itself to the DM creating a story and the players going along with that story, the, the OSR is very much like here's the world, there's all these places going on in it, where do you want to go? It's the, the players and the characters are driving the story and the world is reacting to what they do around them as opposed to I'm going to put you on this path and if you go somewhere where I'm not ready for I'm just going to move the story to that place I, that's something else that like as a DM I got very tired of doing because there's so much preparation every week I was preparing more and more stuff and I was getting exhausted and I was losing interest and I didn't want to play anymore and when I fell down this the OSR rabbit rabbit hole I realized hey there's just like a whole different way for me to play I can do the things I like like the the world building I can create this world I can create this world map and then I can say all right you're in this town uh, here's a couple of plot hooks for you there here's a map of the the landscape around the town not too far but you know there's some mountains over here there's a mine over here there's ruins oh there's this forest there's some weird stuff going on in this forest people are seeing lights and there's this you know pond where people see a shimmering figure walking across the pond area. all these things and then the players decide oh we want to go do that and they're gonna go and they're gonna find some monsters. They might fight the monsters, they might not. The monsters might be too hard for them to kill. And so that's a decision they're gonna to have to make. Are we actually gonna fight them? We're second level, we're not that strong. And this is a bunch of, you know, big angry orcs. Uh, we might not survive this, but you know what? They still get the experience points if they find a way around the, the monsters without fighting them and they get experience points for all the treasure that they found. So things like these little little bits of different way to play, a different style of play, really intrigued me. And that's what made me want to decide to do this. And that's what made me say, you know what, I'm 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 back in. Because I stepped back from role playing games for a little while, for a year or two. Like it's been about been a, about a, a year, year and a half since I've played a, a role-playing game. And also my son is getting very into 5e, which is fine. He's using my books. He's right, he's starting up his... Well, not starting up. It's The club has already started, but he's taking over the Dungeons & Dragons club at his school. So all of these things, I was just like... Now I'm getting excited again to run again. I'm getting excited to create a new world and say this is my world I'm not doing another one this is going to be my world I'm going to create a map and I want to bring players into it and that's something that we're going to do on this channel we're going to create this world start to finish I'm going to show you how I create I'm creating my maps how I'm creating the towns and cities everything we're going to go through it and we're going to have a lot of fun <clears throat> Now, as for the system I'm going to use for this world, I haven't decided yet. I am working on a system of my own that's sort of an amalgamation of a lot of the rules from a lot of these OSR games that I've liked. Uh, so, and some rules are even from, I've pulled from 
5e you know, I've sort of twisted things to make them fit the t kind of world that I want and it's going to be a, a world of low magic magic's going to be very dangerous uh, there's no goblins there's no orcs there's no kobolds I am putting a dragon, but it's going to be a. Very, it's not going to be the typical fantasy dragon. It's going to be a different. It's going to be called a dragon, but it's going to be kind of more of a the Tarask style creature. It's going to be a very stripped down, low fantasy sort of weird world, and I'm excited to start working on that. So I think that's going to be the next video we do next video I uh, put up will be me starting to work on the, that that world and then uh, we'll keep going so anyway give other games a try if you've been playing 5e for a long time try 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 a different game try one of these try an OSR game or a retro clone and see where the game you're playing now came from where like there's nothing wrong with seeing the origins of what you love to do and you might discover that you know maybe the the game you're playing is not doing what you want it to do especially if you're a dm there's nothing wrong with stepping back and saying you know what i want to try something new and hopefully your players will follow you so that's it for this video again i'm tristan this is heroes and homebrew and uh, have fun at your table. Bye.